Welcome to Raw Online. Today we will discuss about flexor retinaculum and carpal tunnel syndrome. So the competency of today's class will be identify and describe flexor retinaculum with its attachment, explain the anatomical basis of carpal tunnel syndrome. The flexor retinaculum is otherwise known as transverse carpal ligament. So we are going to discuss this flexor retinaculum under the following headings, structure, what it is actually and what is the attachment of flexor retinaculum, what are the relations of flexor retinaculum and the functions of flexor retinaculum. So before going to the flexor retinaculum proper, we will just look at the deep fascia of hand. The deep fascia of hand is thickened at certain places like one at the wrist. We can see a band like structure here. So here the deep fascia is thickened to form the flexor retinaculum and the center part of the palm again the deep fascia is thickened to form the palmar aponeurosis and over the digits the deep fascia is thickened to form fibrous flexor sheath. So the deep fascia of hand we can classify into flexor retinaculum in front of wrist, palmar aponeurosis in the center of the palm and fibrous flexor sheath over the anterior aspect of digits. So now coming to the proper flexor retinaculum, here you can see the flexor retinaculum, it is a strong and fibrous band. This band is made up of thickened deep fascia of hand in front of carpal bones. See the wrist is otherwise known as carpus because we have a carpal bones here. So this flexor retinaculum, deep fascia or flexor retinaculum which is going to bridge the concavity of this carpal bones to form a tunnel known as carpal tunnel. So this flexor retinaculum which measures 2.5 centimeter both in means of length and breadth. This flexor retinaculum is going to continuous proximally that is towards the body it is going to continuous with the deep fascia forearm and distally it continuous as the palmar aponeurosis that is the deep fascia of palm. So I told about the carpal bones. So these are the carpal bones which are arranged, I told there will be 8 carpal bones arranged in 2 rows. So we can see here the carpal bones in 2 rows in 2 different colors. The pink color carpal bones, the 4 carpal bones, these are the proximal row carpal bones. From lateral aspect to medial aspect, the name of the carpal bones are scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum and pisiform. So these carpal, four carpal bones are arranged in the proximal row that is towards the forearm. The next four carpal bones are arranged distally that is towards the hand. So from again lateral to medial these are trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hamate. So we can just remember these names, eight carpal bone names by means of a mnemonic known as she looks too pretty try to catch her. So in the proximal row from lateral to medial we have she looks too pretty. So a she S for scaphoid and looks L for lunate, two T for triquetrum and pretty P for pisiform. So again in the distal row from lateral aspect to medial aspect, try to catch her. So T for trapezium, another T, try to, another T for trapezoid, catch, C for capitate, her, H for hamate. So these are about the carpal bones, 8 carpal bones which are arranged in 2 rows, proximal and distal rows. So these carpal bones are going to form a concavity. And that concavity is going to be bridged by our flexor retinaculum. So here again you can see the carpal arch, the 8 carpal bones articulated with each other. And you can see here the 
structure rectangular structure the deep fascia in front of the wrist this is the flexor retina column which is attached to the scarpal bones okay so how it is at attached the four angles are attached to four carpal bones so this is the distal aspect what you see here is the metacarpals and this will be the proximal aspect so where it is going to articulate with the radius and ulna bone so we saw the arrangement of carpal bones in two rows right the proximal row and distal row so in the proximal row from lateral to medial we saw scaphoid she looks lunate try to she looks too pretty and again t for triquetral and p for pisiform so in the two corner bones that is lateral most bone is scaphoid and medial most bone is pisiform so the proximal end of flexor retina column is attached to laterally to the scaphoid and medially to pisiform and in the distal row we have trapezium then trapezoid capitate and hamate so that in the distal distally this flexor retina column is attached laterally to the trapezium and medially to the hook of hamate so this is about the attachment of flexor retina column so it is going to bridge the concavity produced by this carpal arch it is attached on the lateral aspect proximally to the scaphoid and distally to trapezium and medially it is attached to two carpal bones proximally to pisiform and distally to hook of hamate so this is about the attachment of flexor retina column